Right. Now we're like on TV. We're going to try this again. We did it one time, and you won't see it, praise God. <laughs> Technical difficulties. But anyway, welcome to the house of the Lord. Uh, glad to be in the house of God. And uh, we're uh, conscious of the fact that we're ministering uh, we, uh, to those that are uh, present here in the building, uh, which there's not very many of us here, but uh, uh, the rest have had things come up which we'll go into as we do the prayer requests. Uh, but also to our electronic church that's getting this through the uh, CDs and DVDs, the weekly mailings, and also on the Internet, uh, we welcome you. And uh, as I always say, we are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses, and uh, uh, all heaven is pressed in amongst us yes, it is. Uh, to hear the word, the living word yes. of God. So uh, uh, we want to be able to enter in and join them as we uh, allow the Lord to be God in our midst. Praise Amen. God. Now, we do have a lot out. Uh, Charlotte won't be able to be here this morning. Uh, she got uh, very sick overnight, and uh, she's been having a lot of troubles uh, with her uh, stomach as it is and with swelling in her legs. But uh, last night, uh, she couldn't hardly sleep at all, just got like one hour of sleep. And then she had uh, a, a very bad cold this morning. So anyway, she sends her love, and hopefully she'll be here next week with us. Uh, Karen is uh, still uh, traveling in from Arizona. She'll get, get in some kind, sometime today. So we want to remember her. Emmy just sent me a text, and uh, she's on her way uh, to meet uh, Sabrina at her mom's. And uh, she's going to spend the day with them and uh, be with them. So we want to remember her. Mike and Paula Kelly just texted me and said that uh, Paula had had a very hectic week with her uh, floral business. And uh, they're just kind of wore out. So they're going to stay home and just relax a little bit together. So uh, we want to uh, be ministering to them also. Uh, and uh, anyway, we're glad for everybody here. Praise God. And we want to uh, ask the Lord to bless us yes. as we enter into his presence this morning yes. and to bless these others. Lord, I thank you, Lord, because yes. you always bless us. Lord, you're oh. for us, O oh God, and not against us. Your yes. blessings, Lord, uh, overwhelm us, O oh God. Yes, We're thankful for your salvation oh. so rich and free. We thank you for all that you've done for us, yes. Lord. We want to offer up our thanksgiving to you this morning. Sing praises to your name. Worship you in the spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift you on high, oh God. Give you glory. And Lord, we know that your spirit's going to be moving in us, Lord. And through us, Lord. And everything that's said and done in this service, Lord, we pray it will go forth from this place, God. And minister to these that need a touch from the Lord. That God need to be healed in their bodies. Lord, to be raised up into your presence, yes. Lord, to be recovered and recuperated yes. from the exhaustion of their body, O oh God. Yes. Just asking you to minister every one of them, Lord, as your peace comes upon yes. them. O oh God, fill the house with your glory. Yes. Fill the temple, Lord, with your presence. Yes. Let every cell and atom cry, holy, holy, holy. And Lord, lift them into the presence of your, of your resurrection, O oh God. Yes. Bring them forth, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Bless us here this morning. Yes, May we enter in, Lord, uh, and sit down in heavenly places yes. and gather in fellowship yes. with you and the saints, Lord, as we, as we yes. allow you to move through us uh, and speak yes. through us this day, Lord. Yes. Bless us all in Jesus' yes. mighty name, Lord, and we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a song I don't know. I've been singing in my spirit. I don't know if y'all will even know it or not. It's an old one. But uh, uh, I've I just been singing it in my spirit. I believe somebody needs to hear it and uh, worship with it. But it's called Fill This House With Your Glory. Hallelujah. We used to sing it way back. Praise God. Mm. Fill this house. Oh, my God, with thy glory, fill this house with thy presence, oh, my Lord. 
Let us worship the Lord in the Holy of Holies. For Zion rejoices again. Oh, let us worship, fill this house with thy glory. Let me start it again. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Fill this house, oh my God, with thy glory. Fill this house with thy presence, oh my Lord. Let us worship the Lord in the holy of holies, for Zion rejoices again. Hallelujah, glory. Oh, fill this house, oh my God, oh, with thy glory. Yes, fill this house with thy presence, oh my Lord. Let us worship the Lord in the holy of holies, for Zion rejoices again oh fill this house oh my God with thy glory yes fill this house with thy presence oh my Lord let us worship the Lord in the holy of holies for Zion rejoices again sing it hallelujah oh let fill this house oh my God with thy glory fill this house with thy presence oh my Lord let us worship the Lord in the holy of holies for Zion rejoices Again, hallelujah, hallelujah, fill the house with your glory, O Lord, let your presence be in the midst of us, Almighty God, come forth, thou mighty Christ, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hosanna in the highest, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let those people of the Lord be filled with joy. Oh God, take sadness off their hearts, Lord. Lift them on high, Almighty oh God. Let them be in the presence of your salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. It's something to think about the fact that Hebrews 12 does tell us that we are compassed about 
with a great cloud of witnesses. Yes. Hallelujah. What are they witnessing to? They're witnessing the appearing of God in flesh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. They're witnesses to the fact that God is in the temple, filling the temple with his glory, tabernacling with man, and all heaven are compassed about this realm, looking into it, hearing the word of the Lord as it sets them free and sets us free at the same time. Yes. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah, yes. hallelujah. So it's awesome to think that we are in the presence of all that God is, all that's in God yes. and all that God is. is in our midst, hallelujah. How can we be, uh, speak just as men would speak in the presence of such a time as this? We must speak as the oracles of God, hallelujah, Amen. and speak words of life into the earth and into the heavens, into creation, hallelujah, and minister life into it all, hallelujah. Yes. We're on the front lines Amen. of what God's doing, hallelujah. We're on the cutting edge of it, and thank God for it, hallelujah, hallelujah. So that in the midst of it all, God is glorified. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. How great he is. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. I've been born again I'm more than a conqueror That's who I am I'm a new creation Oh, I'm a brand new man I'm a new creation Oh, I'm a brand new man Old things are passed away I've been born again I'm more than a conqueror That's who I am I'm a new creation I'm a brand new man I'm a new creation I'm a brand new man Old things are passed away I've been born again I'm more than a conqueror That's who I am I'm a new creation I'm a brand new man Come on, hallelujah I'm a new creation I'm a brand new man Oh, things are past away and I've been born again I'm more than a conqueror that's who I am oh, I'm a new creation I'm a brand new man amen let's give the Lord a hand this morning oh hallelujah hallelujah glory He's been emphasizing to me here lately, you don't answer to the old. Amen. The old doesn't have any part in us. <laughs> Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Past is past. That's the old man, the old life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. We've been born anew yes, from have. those things which are above. Glory. Hallelujah. Of and we have now have a new life. Glory. Yes. And that new life is in Christ. Hallelujah. Not in Adam, in Christ. Yes, Hallelujah. So, amen, that's where we want to live from, yes, is in Christ. Glory to God. Yes. Body, soul, and spirit yes. being preserved unto the appearing of the Lord. Yes. That's what God is doing. Hallelujah. The whole man, the full salvation, being imparted into every part of our being. Praise yes. God. Hallelujah. And that's why we're pressing in yes, we are. to hit the mark of the high Glory. calling 
in Christ Jesus, yeah. our Lord. Hallelujah. And I pray that yeah. you have strength today to run the race, hallelujah. Oh God, to yeah. press into this realm hallelujah. that is in our midst, hallelujah. hallelujah. To access it, participate yes. in it. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Let God in you, Praise hallelujah, be the hope of you. Yes. He is able to bring us this far and the rest of the way, yes, hallelujah, until we are found as he is. Yes. That uh, song that Nina Scott wrote in the, that we sang in the first service of the uh, in-gathering last weekend, I won't be satisfied until I awake in his likeness. Oh, my. Amen. Hallelujah. I just love what David said there in the Psalms. There's no satisfaction for us. No resting, uh, laying down and saying, well, this is a good spot, I'll just stay here. Not for us. We are, being, we are called and ordained to go all the way in, praise God, yeah. until our whole being is, is uh, transfigured and transformed Amen. into that living expression Hallelujah. of God in the earth. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm still uh, feeling the uh, remnants of that meeting in my Amen. spirit. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, yes. hallelujah. It was just tremendous to be in the midst of God's people and to feel that glory that comes from people being joined together in God with one mind, one purpose, one voice. How many thank God for the unity that was in these meetings? Amen. I do, yes. praise God. Yes. Because uh, only, only the unity can bring that kind of a presence forth. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I will arise I'll give my own To gain the prize Of his great call now give my life for creation's cause until I see his light his light Revealed in all, I will arise. Oh, and I'll give my all. Yes, I will, Lord, to gain the prize. Revealed in all by any means necessary, yes. oh God, I will arise, I will arise, oh Lord, and I'll give my all 
Take all of me, hallelujah, to gain the prize of his great call. And I'll give my very life for creation's call. Until I see his life, his life revealed in all. Until I see his life, his life revealed in all. Yes, I will, Lord. Yes, I will, Lord. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. I am running into you, Jesus. I will not be denied. Hallelujah. Oh, neither things above nor things beneath. Nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers of the air will keep me, Lord, from entering into your love and power. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I will arise, I will arise, I will arise. Rise up, O ye people of the Lord. Come into the heavens of thy God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Zach and I got into quite a discussion this morning over breakfast. And, you know, uh, we've been uh, sick, but we're starting to get well again. A response is coming out of the body of Christ, and it's making it whole again. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But it is a, a, a fight for our life. In Christ. Uh, for those that think that all they have to do is sit and wait for something to come to them, then I, I, I would say uh, rethink that and maybe get another vision. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we're going to the mountain. Yes. We have to climb the mountain. We have to make it to the heights of the mountain. It's in the tops of the mountains that the house of the Lord is established. Amen. It's in the high places of God. And if we're terrestrial, if we're earthly, if we just sit in our earth and just be satisfied with a soulish comprehension of God, then that's all we'll get. We'll be like all other creation. We'll live, we'll eat, we'll drink, and we'll die. And we'll go the way of all flesh. But God is eventually going to have another solution in the earth. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. You, Jesus is yes. a prototype of that. Amen? Amen. He is the first of that kind of man that's going to enter into that presence, yes. into that dimension, into that transformation. Hallelujah. He overcame the flesh. He overcame the earthliness of Adam, the dust of the earth. He overcame the gravity of an earthly dimension. Yeah. And the scripture says, while he walked on earth, he himself was in heaven. Yes, he, was. he transcended the earthly dimension. Hallelujah. And that's what we're called to. Amen. Uh, I, I don't think I'll sing anymore. Uh, I'll tell you what, if uh, I, I think it'd be good if we all just would express ourselves some this morning. Uh, I'm sure Zach's got something to say in the Lord, and I'd like to see Sandy and Derek say something for the Lord. Uh, and just let's express ourselves in Christ. There, there, uh, this has to be verbalized. There's something about speaking it, saying it, 
uh, we can think on it, we can hold it in us, we can have thoughts on it, but when you say it, when you verbalize Christ, then that brings it into a manifestation. And that manifestation not only blesses us, but it blesses those that hear that expression of God. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be a shouting, jumping kind of a thing. It may be. It may be all of that. It doesn't have to be. Amen. But we exercise it. Uh, Shart and I have uh, uh, been saying here lately, we're going to make a way for an expression of Christ in our midst so that it comes out of us, pure spirit out of us. Hallelujah. And, and you know, I'm getting ready to minister on things that God has been speaking to me about that I don't know anything about. I don't have the knowledge of it. It's beyond my knowledge. So I'm going to feel like an idiot to begin with. <laughs> I really am. And that's all right. I've been there before. Almost every time I minister, I feel like an idiot. I feel like, man, I'm saying things that I don't even know what I'm talking about here. I don't have all the information on it. And yet, God speaks. And you see, that is what he's looking for, is willing vessels. God wants to say some things. God wants to express himself through us. But if we only say those things that we already know, then guess what? We're not moving on. We're only ruminating about what we have already discussed at another time. And there will be that, but at the same time, somewhere in there of ministering, God is going to start speaking out of us things that we haven't pre-thought or preconceived. Uh, and there will come a point where we end and he takes it. Amen? Uh, and, and so we begin somewhere, and the beginning of it is just expressing God mm -hmm. in whatever way we can. Talk about his love. Talk about his mercy. Talk about what he's done for us. Talk about uh, uh, what God has spoken to us during, in our heart that we haven't told others about. That's what God wants to be brought out of us. Things that the Spirit has dropped into our heart along the way. And, and at the right time, at the right moment, God says, now, I want to say this through you. I want to bring this out of you. Why is he doing that? Because somebody that we are going to be ministering to in whatever way God wants, either through the Spirit, by the vibrations of his voice through us in the Spirit, or by CD or DVD or digital, however. I don't care. But it has to be expressed at times. Amen? Why don't you come and lead us off, Zach? Praise God. I haven't heard Zach in a while, and I want him to be free to express uh, what the Lord has been speaking to his heart. Amen. Zach, pray. Hey Amen. Well, the Lord's definitely been stirring a lot in my heart. And if anybody was at the end gathering, it'd be hard for God not to be stirring several things in your heart about this time. Yes. Um, but it's just amazing, a time we're in. Um, I tell you, we're in a make or break time in the body of Christ. We're in a, and, and I know it's been talked about a lot of years, we're in another move of God, we're in a transition. But I truly believe we're in the transition. I believe we're in the move. We're entering into that which we've been talking about. And the Lord really laid some scriptures on my heart. Um, laid them, I actually, I remember Thursday morning before the end gathering, I was sitting around reading. And the Lord just really allowed me to see some things ever so clearly. And it's maybe some stuff that others have seen and heard. And, and as Bob was saying, there's some things that I've been having. But I really just want to begin to minister and let the Lord speak in the midst of whatever I have already. Because that's the goal is we've got to begin to walk in this new place where it's God ministering out of us. It's one thing to get a revelation from God then, then deliver it out of your own knowledge, out of your own understanding. But it's another thing to take that revelation and try to be free to let God expand on it in the midst of others. Yes, and so that's where I'm at this morning. I just want to allow God to be God Hallelujah. and just allow him to speak in the midst Hallelujah. of what I know. Because what do I really know? <laughs> yeah. I know little bitty bits and pieces. Yeah. But if I try to even put them together, it's mind-boggling how it all fits together in my natural sense. Yeah. 
But my spirit receives it. My spirit understands it. My spirit is the place that I want to minister it out of. So I want to go over into Numbers uh, chapter 10. Um, and, and I'm going to read a few scriptures, but I'm just going to try to be free in it. And I don't know if any of it will make sense. Maybe there will be little bits and pieces that come out. I don't really care this morning. I just want to minister. Because I know that there's people out there that need ministry right now. There's people that are suffering, dying. That they're up against the death in this hour. There's people that are on their deathbed. And they're still ministering Christ from that. And so it's our job to minister Christ with them. In that place that they're in. Minister Christ to them. Because they're not always going to have the strength to do it themselves. In the natural. And we know that the natural and emotional can take a toll on allowing us to enter into that place in God we need to be. So that's what priests did. They went in and uh, worshipped God. They went in and praised the Lord for the camp of Israel. For all the sins. For all the stuff that was going on. For all the uncleanliness. For all the unholiness. For all the things that weren't God going on in that camp. Israel began to go in and worship before the Lord. There began to be fragrances. There began to be sounds. There began to be praise. The appearing of the Lord began to take place on the mercy seat. And that's what I desire is for us to come in here and begin to have that appearing of the Lord. In the midst of us. From that mercy seat. Because how many knows that we need that mercy? (laughs) Especially in this hour. We're not by any means perfected yet. And we have to have that mercy and that grace to allow us to enter into this place that God wants to put us in. So I want to start reading a few scriptures. Um, And and, and as everybody knows, the Numbers book is a a book with a lot of, uh, it's exactly what it's called, a lot of numbers. It's numbering off the camps of Israel, telling them all about setting up the order of the tabernacle and all that. Um, and in the first nine chapters, it explains a lot of that. But there was something that caught my attention. And Bob's written, so I don't know. Maybe I may end up saying some things that's already been said because I, I haven't been able to read all that time of trumpets. But I believe that's where we're at. We're in a time of trumpets. And there was a trumpet that was blown this last week. But I believe there's a new trumpet beginning to be blown. Because as we know, the trumpets always serve a purpose in the camp. They're for different things. They're going to set, if, if they're going to break camp, They're going to blow a certain trumpet to let the east side depart, the south side. They're going to blow a certain trumpet for people to assemble. They're going to blow a certain trumpet for the alarm, to to sound the alarm. That's where I believe we're at. I believe we're beginning to sound the alarm from Zion, from that place which is heavenly. We're going to begin to sound the alarm, not just in our land, but in all the earth. I believe it's coming from a place from within that's going to begin to minister out to the the depths of the earth. To all those things, as I forget who ministered on it, but all those little bitty things that are in the land. All the little bitty nooks and crannies, all the hidden places, all the things that we think are already dealt with within us, that alarm is going to begin to sound in that earth. Well, glory. Yes. And so I want to, uh, the ninth verse is really what I want to minister on, but I'm going to start with the seventh because it, it talks about some of that in the amplified version. Uh, okay. Um, in the seventh verse of the uh, tenth chapter, it says, When the congregation is to be assembled, you shall blow the trumpets in short sharp tones but not the blast of an alarm see it tells you right there you have to begin to understand the sounds of the trumpet you have to begin to know because there's a purpose because as I hear all the time people are blowing trumpets left and right but are they serving a purpose and is it God's sound and it tells a specific sound because somebody could get out there and try to assemble a congregation and blow on that trumpet a lot different than Lord commanded and said everybody come gather to me everybody come listen to what I have to say but if it's not the sound that God laid out it's not the true gathering. It's not the true assembling of a people. All right. And I believe that people heard that assembling trump last week. I believe that people heard that trump and said, I got to go to Dixon, Tennessee this week and hear something that the Lord's prepared. He began to gather a people in. And not just as we know, not just in the earthly realm. I believe there are people brought in in a spiritual realm to a gathering. Because even though I know it's not a physical place, there's some interconnectedness where certain people that are already crossed over are allowed to come and gather with us. They're allowed to assemble with us. Because that's what it is. It's truly an assembling of a body. An assembling of a ministry. Through a sound of a trumpet. Through a certain order. Through a certain order. By the king himself, Jesus. He sends it through somebody. Through a people. He begins to send a trumpet in their land. And they hear that sound. Uh And they say, I know something's happening. And I'm not going to miss it. And those that are tuned up to hear it, hear that and answer that call. And in the 8th verse... It says, And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow the trumpets, and the trumpets shall be to you for a perpetual statute through your generations. 
And this is the one uh, of where I think we're, where we're at. In the ninth verse, it says, when you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, and I think that enemy we're up against right now is the death. Yes. That's the enemy right now. Right. The, last enemy. the last enemy to be put underfoot is death. Yes. Yes. Now, it's been done in Jesus, and I think it was ministered so great through the conference. In Jesus, it is done. It is finished. But it's being worked out in a people. Yes. The first fruits are being called out from all the other things we've been involved with. They're hearing that trumpet. And some of them don't know what it is whenever they first get called. They hear something that's different than they've ever heard. Amen. And I know we had people in the midst of the congregation last week that heard something they had never heard before. Oh but they identified it. Their inner man said, I know that sound. I was birthed from that sound. I was created by that sound. Yes. So it's not that we've got to convince them. There's something in them that just leaps when they hear it. Yes. <laughs> and so it says, against the enemy that oppresses you. And how many know we're being oppressed by that enemy, the death? Like I said, we could go on down the list from Nina Scott to Charlotte to uh, Emmeline Brandon to, to Gary was getting attacks after the, the things with migraines in his back and uh, with Bob with his physical, with all these things that are going on. I mean, you can go way on down the list. I've just named a few. There's so many of the ministry that are in this place that we're ministering of that are being attacked by that enemy, the death. Yes, sir. And how many knows <laughs> it's for a purpose? Oh, hallelujah. Because it's working something up out of that earth. It's bringing something forth that hasn't been brought forth in creation yet. There's something hidden within the very genetics of man that's going to begin to change things. But it has to be called out. Just like in the garden, it has to begin to, that, the earth has to begin to be dug up to allow the seeds that have been planted to come forth. Because if that soil, soil was unprepared, that seed would never have a chance. So God's been preparing us, some longer than others, some very fast. Uh, uh, some, but it's all for a purpose. So God's ready to bring that forth which he's established in man since the foundation of the world. Yes. As we know, God's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He knew all of these things. Amen. It was for a plan. It wasn't by accident. Yes. It wasn't by chance that man was entered into a realm this, this uh, depraved, this vain, this, this, this absent of God. But God chose to put himself within man yes. to allow him to appear in this realm. Yes. Jesus yes. being the first. The very fullness of God in flesh. That very prototype that we have to look to naturally, spiritually, in, in the unity of it all. Because he's the only one we have to look at. That we can get a full picture of what's going to happen. It says it oppresses you, then blow an alarm with the trumpets. See, at the assembly it said, don't blow the alarm. But it says when that enemy begins to oppress you, blow the alarm. With the trumpets, that you may be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from the enemies. Glory. That's what we're talking about, a full salvation that's coming to our vessel. Body, spirit, soul. It started inwardly, and it's beginning to work outwardly. Yes. There's a salvation taking place on such a deeper level than a church world preaches. It's not just about getting your soul to make heaven. We're talking about entering into heaven. Amen. And not just the levels of heaven we've been to, we're entering into a new heaven. It says we're going to bring a new heaven and a new Glory. earth. We're entering into a new place. Yes. One where only Jesus abides. Because we've entered into that and we've, we've came out of that. And we've entered into that and we've came out of that. And as just Bob said earlier, Jesus stayed in that place in the earth realm. That's right. Jesus never left it. No matter what. No matter with lashings on his back, carrying a cross. He, he contemplated, as we talked about in the garden, he asked uh, the, the Father if this cup, uh, let this cup pass. But he knew that there was a purpose in it. And that's the same place where we're at, where we're getting to, is we're facing afflictions, we're facing sufferings, we're facing crucifixions. Yes. We're facing these things of our natural man. And we've got to keep pressing forward. Yes. Yes. No matter what our natural age is, no matter what our natural understanding is, no matter where we're at in life, we've got to keep pushing forward. Amen. Because it's a process of dying to allow him to live. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. And so it says, sound, blow that alarm. And you shall be saved from your enemies. Yeah. Now over in, uh, I want to go to Second Chronicles uh, chapter 20. Yeah. Starting in verse 6. And in here, uh, Jehoshaphat, he's, kinda, he's crying out to the Lord. Because as we know in that time, there were wars raging all over. And as we know often, in, in, in what well, this time I believe Judah and Jerusalem was divided, um, I mean, yeah, and, you know, oftentimes the Holy Land was going into wars with its enemies. Mm -hmm. 
And I think these are spiritual prototypes to what we're dealing with today. There's enemies in our land. Not just the enemy, death, but there's little foxes that have gotten into our land. There's these little things that have been built up in man that we got to get rid of. We got to overcome these things. These kingdoms that are not of God that are within us got to be overtaken by the king. And so I think we're so much, I love reading whenever Israel, um, whatever state their, their country is at the time, goes into war with these other nations because it, usually it represents something. Most of them are known, these nations are known for something, idolatry or uh, uh, prostitution and sexual immorality. And these are the same kingdoms that man's dealing with today yes. in him. Right. These are kingdoms, that's what I, uh, I think it was said this past week and everybody says this generation is so corrupt. I don't believe that it's any more corrupt than man's ever been. But the reason being because there's yet to be a ministry called for it to begin to touch these things. Hallelujah. We've seen bits and pieces here. We've seen people in wheelchairs get up and walk. We've seen people get delivered. We've seen these in bits and pieces, but there's not yet been a ministry to begin to touch these things. The root cause of these things. The death that's operating in man that's causing these things to be a reality still. The more we begin to minister and the more we begin to put these things underfoot, the more that these things begin to be taken out of our land. Hallelujah. And it's by an overtaking. It's not by, uh, I, I loved what uh, um, Dennis had said about the word becoming flesh. Amen. We keep trying to make the flesh word. Amen. But the word is just taking over. Yeah. It's becoming flesh. Yeah. It's beginning to change what we are into something new. Yes. So in that chapter 20 and verse 6, um, and as I said, he's crying out. Uh, um, as I, as I said, uh, well, in verse 5, I'll just back up for a second. Je Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? In your hand are power and might so that none is able to withstand you. Did not you... O oh, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. Verse 8, the, they dwelled in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying in the ninth verse, If evil comes upon us, the sword of judgment or pestilence or famine, we will stand before the house and before you for your name and the symbol of your presence is in this house. How many knows his presence is in this house? It's beginning to stand up. It's beginning to judge some things with that sword. And it says, and cry to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. That's what it said. It said if he will hear and save. And what's he going to hear? He's going to hear that alarm. And we're going to talk more about that alarm here in just a second. And in the uh, 16th verse of Second Chronicles, it says, Tomorrow go down to them, behold, they will come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the ravine before the wilderness of Jeruel. And the 17th, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Right. Take your positions, stand still. See, we can't just go jumping around doing anything we want in this day. God's saying, stand still. He's saying, wait upon the Lord. Yes. Wait upon me. This isn't your battle. We're going to use you. We're going to work through you, but this isn't your battle. I'm the, one that can, I'm the only one that can defeat this thing. Yes. So we can go out and do whatever we want. We can go out and proclaim whatever we want. We can go out and start teaching whatever we want. But it's not going to be reality unless we wait upon the Lord. Oh, yes. Stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord is with you. That's the command the Lord has given us right now. Don't fear. The Lord is with us. Hallelujah. Go out and fight these battles. Hallelujah. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping him. That's where it's beginning to come is that worship. Praise worshiping God. him. Yes. And I want to skip ahead. Um, there's, a, there's a point, now. I don't remember what verse, but it said that uh, it, whenever, whenever God in the Exodus, whenever God allowed Israel to be set free, and we know that that has such a spiritual implication of that deliverance, that being set free of what, that bondage, that he didn't allow them to go and take over certain lands. They entered into that place without taking over, I think, Edom and uh, Ammon, and I, I can't remember the three names, oh, uh, Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir. 
it, oh, I found the scripture, the tent. It said, Now behold the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out from the land of Egypt. See, there's things that whenever we were delivered and set free, there's still things there that God didn't allow to be touched yet. Not that he didn't have the power to touch them, because God could have already did this thing. But as it said, we're waiting upon the Lord. And so there's things that are still in this world, in this earth, that haven't been ruled over yet by Jesus. He in himself has already ruled over these things. But in us, we're still allowing these kingdoms and these countries to be present when they have no business to be there. I believe that's the order that God's beginning to give. All these things that have still been there since you've gained your deliverance, since you've gained your revelation, since you've gained your understanding, since you begin to come to know me, since you've been in Israel worshiping me, building tabernacles, doing all these things, there's still lands that were never set free. You've went about your way doing all your own things, but there's still lands that are not of me. There's kingdoms that have to have me on the throne. And that's where God's beginning to give us this sound, to sound the alarm. Because it's a war cry. It's a battle. It's, it's um, uh, not in a religious sense, but in a spiritual sense. There's truly a war raging in the heavens right now. I heard that cry several times in last week's meeting, a war cry. And there's going to be sorrow. There was tears shed. There was sorrow. There was worshiping. There was getting on our knees before the Lord. Because it's not in our own strength. It's us falling before the Lord and worshiping and saying, move on us, God. Bless us. And just as Dennis ministered that substance, God's calling us to a place so he's going to give us substance. He's going to give us what we need when we need it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And it said, um, in a 25th, no, I'll start in a 26, um, and then I want to hop over to Joel and, and wrap this up. But it says, 26 verse, it said, on the fourth day they assembled in the valley of uh, Barakic, Baraka. There they blessed the Lord. So the name of this place is still called the Valley of uh, Baraka, which means blessing. Then they returned, every man of Judah and Jerusalem, Jehoshaphat leading them to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord has made them to rejoice over their enemies. They came to Jerusalem with harps, lyres, and trumpets to the house of the Lord. How many know there's been a sound resonating forth in the spiritual? From these stringed instruments, from these voices, from all these things. Hallelujah. And it said, and the fear of God came upon all the other kingdoms, all the kingdoms of those countries, when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest round about. How many know there's some kingdoms that are trembling in our land? Glory. There's some things trying to put up a fight, because they know the Lord's taken over. Yes. They've heard about what the Lord's doing. Yes. In us and outside of us. There's some kingdoms that are beginning to acknowledge that Jesus isn't dead. Amen. He didn't go to a tomb Amen. and resurrect and go off somewhere afar off. These things within us understands that that presence of Christ is within us. And it's trying to resist it. But how many knows that it can't resist it when the Lord gets to moving? Because the Lord's a fiery presence. He's, he's a, a consuming fire. Amen. He's burning up all these things within us that aren't him. These things that he allowed to stay there. That's the thing, is it wasn't that he wasn't any stronger yesterday than he is today. He was strong enough from day one to, to overcome these things in us. Yes. But he has a plan, and he has a purpose. And it's not just for us, it's for all creation. Yes. So there's timing. There's, there, there, there's ordinances that the, that, Lord, that the Lord gives to say when to move, when to do these things, when to blow the trumpet, when to do this, when to go to battle, when to sit silent, when to worship, when to do all these things. All right. Just as in an earthly kingdom would have. And, and so over, uh, I want to flip to the book of Joel now in the uh, uh, second chapter. I need to grab something really quick. Uh, because I want to read the uh, Hebrew definition for alarm. Because it's not, it, it wasn't what I thought it would be. Part of it was, part of it was what I thought it would be because, you know, you think of an alarm. I mean, I think of like a, being at work and a fire alarm goes off and it's like panic, chaos, run. But that's not what God's talking about. God's not talking about just start screaming and acting crazy and let your enemies be scared. 
So where that alarm sound before I read uh, out of Joel, the second uh, chapter, comes from uh, 7321 in the Strong's Concordance of the uh, Hebrew. And it's R-U-A, Rua. And what that means is it's a verb. The definition is to raise a shout, give a blast. But if you further translate it, it's talking about a, a specific shout, a specific blast. As I said, just not a chaotic one. It's just an alarm to make noise and to, to, to let people know you're there. Sound. It's a certain sound. Yes. It says, the Strong's exhaustive concordance defines it as blow an alarm, cry alarm, aloud, out, destroy. This is what I really think that the Lord's causing us to do in this hour. It says, make a joyful noise. Shout for joy is what it says. Yeah. I think that there's a people that are beginning to cause this joyful noise to ring yeah. forth in the heavens. Yeah. That after we've assembled, we're beginning to go out into the land and shout with joy. Saying the Lord's here. He's beginning to take over these kingdoms. He's beginning to do these things. Look at it. It's appearing. It's not something we're just talking about. Look, I'm the, uh, there's people going through hell still sounding a joyful noise. That's what he says. If the enemy attacks you, shout with joy. It's that opposite reaction. When that death tries to enter in, opposite react to it. Shout for joy. Let it know who the Lord is. Say there's a, 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 a king in my land that's going to take dominion over you. Oh, yes. oh death, where is your sting? That's what he said. So I love that whenever I saw that because that's what I, I heard this last weekend. And we heard it uh, uh, just naturally, but in the spirit also. We heard stringed instruments. Uh, 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 the camp of Israel brought its trumpets. It brought its instruments. It brought its voices. And we were shouting a war cry. Oh, yes. That's what it had said back in uh, uh, Numbers. It said, in the time of war, sound the alarm. Amen. We're in a time of war, and we began to sound that alarm this last week. Yay. But we've got to carry that alarm on. Because what the earth's going to try to do, the natural realm, is going to keep trying to get that alarm a little bit more quiet. Hallelujah. We're going to get back to work. We're going to begin to hit reality, let reality hit us. Yes. We're going to begin to get sick again. We're going to let reality hit us. We're going to begin to uh, contemplate, and, and, and is this really what we're going to do in this hour? But I believe that's what God is calling in this hour. He wants people to begin to sound an alarm, Amen. to not do it quietly, Amen. to keep it resonating in all the land, Amen. so that all the camp of Israel understands Lord. that the enemy is on an attack. We've got to begin to let them know about it, oh, oh, yes. because there's some people that haven't been fine-tuned yet. So if we're one that the gods begin to allow us to hear these things, we've got to sound them out we got to begin to let people know what's going on. And it's their, it's their thing to answer that call. Yes. Then whenever they begin to answer it, we begin to get more and more assembled into this heavenly gathering, this ecclesia oh, of God, oh, where this joyful noise is being radiated from, where we're worshiping. That's what the joyful noise is too. It's not just to, again, scream it and shout it. It's a joyful noise of worship, yes. of the Lord, yes. of King Jesus. We're on our knees shouting with joy for King Jesus. Hallelujah. When we come to that place where we realize, God, I'm not sufficient. Slay me. Manifest within me so that a true king can take his place. Because we like to try to be king, but we don't have any ruling and reigning over these things that we're talking about. Only the Lord Jesus has dominion over these things. Yes, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord. We want to glorify your name this morning, Father. We just want to put you where you belong in our lives, Jesus. We want to put you beyond anything else that tries to stand in your way in our land, Father. That we know that you're taking over all these things that have been in the midst of us, that have tried to take our land captive, that have tried to take over our house. But we know that there's only one true king that dwells within us. And that's you, Lord. So we call you forth up out of a groaning creation. We ask for an appearing, one that the earth's not yet seen. We need it, Lord. We're crying out. We're on our knees. But we're going to begin to sound the alarm. We're going to begin to cry out with joy. Nana, begin to sound the alarm. Begin to shout with joy. For the Lord is in your house. And he's ready to raise up with a new appearing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the Lord's ready. Hey. We just got to submit. As it said, we just got to wait. Amen. He's ready. Amen. He's been ready. Lord. And he chose us to appear. Right. He didn't have to choose us. 
We're not that important and special. We are because he chose us, but outside of his choosing, we're not that important and special. I mean, I'm not here to beat us down, but, but, but without God's uh, ordination of us, of, of his calling out, of, of, of his love, we're nothing. We would just be another piece of creation floating along. As people see it, we would just be another animal in the earth realm. If God had not called us out and chose us to be his creation, chose us to be made in his image and likeness, chose us to bear the very image and name of our King Jesus. See, no other animal has that understanding. Because in a natural sense, we belong to that kingdom. But in a heavenly sense, we have no business identifying with that kingdom. And that's what people do. They just identify with it. They say, it's all right. I have these sexual desires, so let me go act on them. Let me go do whatever. Let me, my, my, uh, 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 it, it, it feels good to go out there and kill and steal and, and do all these things. Let me just be a beast because that's what I am. I'm just a beast. I'm just of this earth. But they don't see the reality of who we are in Christ. I believe that's that first step. I believe that that's whenever we get summons as Paul, I mean Saul was whenever he became Paul. He began to understand who he was in Jesus. And he didn't have a choice in the matter. Just like I believe in this day, we're not having a lot of choice with what's going on. Even the new revelations, even the new understandings, as Bob was talking about, the new things that the Lord's laying in us to minister, we don't really know what we're going to be saying. It's not our choice. He's going to keep pushing us. As I'm fixing to read here, we're going to have fire behind us. That heat that was talked about in the conference, we've got a trail of fire because he's heating us up to push us because we're not going to stand still. Just like with the tabernacle, if we don't move when the cloud, I mean, when the pillar of fire and the cloud moves, we're just doing our own thing still. We're just worshiping. We're just going before the altar. We're doing this. We're doing that. And God's not even there. Amen. we got to move when God moves. Amen. In a war, the, the, in, in the older days, because now war is a lot different than it was, um, if the king was going somewhere, the people followed. The leader of the army, I mean, not the king, the, the leader of the army, though, if they're going to go somewhere to battle, they're going to follow them. Yes. If they just went off on their own, a little bitty uh, 10, 15 people, and tried to fight that battle, they're going to lose it every time. Yes. Because there's only that one person that has all the knowledge of what's really going on. The knowledge of what the enemy's doing. The knowledge of what's, what the land's really like. They're the only one with that perspective because they've been given the information. They've been given the data. And that's what we're being summoned to. We're being summoned into a special meeting with the Lord to be given oh, these instructions, to be given this information of how we're going to take over the enemy, how we're going to take these lands captive. But if we go off and try to do it on our own, we're not going to be having the pieces of information we need. And just like a, a, a person that's leading the war would, he's going to give them to us when we need them. Because if we had all the pieces right now, we would mess it up. <laughs> we would try to do it the way we want to do it. We would try to figure it all out. But there's a divine council in the heavenlies right now that we're, we're appearing... Exactly what was said last week, it, it hit my spirit so strong. We have an appointment with the king, a summons, or I forget the word that was used. We're being invited into the king's chambers to come before the throne, to get an inside perspective on what's really going on with creation. Because nobody has that right now. Nobody has the reality of what we're facing down. Our carnal man keeps trying to tell us that we do. Our ego tries to say, I got it all figured out. I understand it. I can do this. But the reality is we can't. We got to stay humble. Got to stay humble. So I'm going to end with uh, uh, Joel, uh, the second chapter. Um, or I'm going to start chapter 1, just 14th and 15th verse, really quick to read. Um, says, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land in the house of the Lord your God, and cry to the Lord in penitent pleadings. Alas, for the day, for the day of the judgment of the Lord is at hand, and as a destructive temptest from the Almighty will it come. See, judgment day is here, and it's not as the church world preaches it. Thank God for judgment day. Who wants to be left undone, unfinished? Our carnal man does because it gets uncomfortable to him. Our natural man keeps saying, leave me alone, God. I'm fine the way I am. I got this all figured out. I just want to sit at home and watch TV and go to work and do all these things and remain unchanged. But God's setting a fire to us. 
He's beginning to change us. In the second chapter, it says, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm on my holy mount, Zion. That's that alarm. Sound the alarm in Mount Zion. Let the people know that the enemy is being attacked. Because I don't think, uh, I know it says the enemy is attacking, but I think we're attacking the enemy. I don't think we're going to sit back and let the enemy attack us. I think we're going to begin to shout a joyful noise and attack the enemy. Because when we begin to tell the enemy how big our God is, it begins to just flee. Because it has no power. We talk about that all the time, darkness and light. The, the darkness has no power. It has all the power we give it. That's like keeping all your electricity off and just walking around your house at night. Keep bumping into things and never try to change it. Every time. It says, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the judgment of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand. In the second verse, it says, A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and of the mist and darkness, of the thick mist and darkness, like the morning dawn spread upon the mountain. Yes. So there comes a heathen, hostile people, numerous and mighty, the like of which has never been before and shall not be again, even to the years of many generations. And this is the part I love. It says, A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. How many knows we're leaving a des desolate wilderness behind us? Yes. We're beginning to walk into that land that's been promised. Yes. Many of us keep saying, when, Lord? When, oh God, am I going to have this? As uh, Really, uh, uh, now I think of it, it's that Garden of Eden where it's functional. Right. Like that mechanical uh, Greek thing, talked to, or Hebrew or whatever thing talked about, where we enter back into that place of functionality. Hallelujah. We're leaving all this desert land to go back into Eden. But we're going to be changed. We're not going to be like we were in the beginning in the Father. Because then why would God have did all this just to leave us as we originally were? God chose to do all this to give us something more. To give us a new glory in Him, a new understanding. And it says, Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yes, and none has escaped the ravaging of the devouring hordes. It says their appearance is like the appearance of horses. And like war horses and horsemen, so do they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire devouring the stubble. Like a mighty people set in battle array. See, that's what we're fighting with. We're fighting with fire. And people's going to get burnt. <laughs> that's the reality there's going to be people that you come in contact with that are going to get overtaken by that fire but if we're not allowing that's what it said these people had fire going before them had fire behind them it was a ministry of fire that's what I believe we got to become those flames of fire that ministry where we're ministering the very pure word of God like the noise on chariots on the tops of mountains they leap um like a mighty people set in a battle of Ray in the sixth verse. Before them, the people, peoples are in anguish. All faces become pale. Yeah. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like mighty men, men of war. They march each one straight ahead on his ways, and they do not break their ranks. <laughs> right there, they do not break their ranks. That's an order. That's where God's preparing us, because that's an order. If in an army, like I said earlier, ten men chose to go out of their rank and go over here and try to do it, it's not going to work. Each man in his own ranks. Neither does one thrust upon another. They walk everyone in his path. And they burst through it and upon the weapons. Yet they are not wounded and do not change their course. They leap upon the city. They run upon the wall. They climb upon and into the houses. They enter in at the windows like a thief. The earthquakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and the moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their shining. And the Lord utters his voice before his army, for his host is very great, and they are strong and powerful who execute God's word. Yes, yes. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can endure it? That's who we are. People say, I can't climb a wall. <laughs> not physically able to 
That's what we're talking about. We're talking about something that defies the laws of the natural. Say, I'm battling death right now. I'm on the verge of losing my life as I know it. How am I going to be this person to overtake the enemy? Because there's a spirit within us that never loses strength. And as we begin to minister by the spirit, and as we begin to do that and call that spirit up out of others, it begins to strengthen their mortal bodies. It begins to bring them into that. uh, uh, And that's what we talk about. We're heading to that immortal state, but we're in a process. It's not just going to happen like that. I think it could if God wanted to, but God's allowing a process to be done. It's a day-by-day, step-by-step process. Yes. So I thank the Lord um, and, and praise and honor Him. And He's just He's laid my spirit so strongly to begin to sound that alarm, to begin to let creation know. And right now, I don't even think it's as much about creation. I think a lot of it's about the inner circles of the so-called... Uh, revelated ones because there's some people forgetting what we're dealing with and there's some people that have to acknowledge what we, what we need to come to battle with what we need to overtake what we can't allow to reside in us us that are ministering uh, and that's everybody included whether you're getting up or not we can't come into the house of the Lord in Dixon, Tennessee week after week with these things operating in us and not out of condemnation But it's because we're not going to be where God needs us if these things are still present in our land. They have to be overtaken. They have to be changed. And we can hide them from everybody. We can keep them down in that closet. We can keep Uncle Larry down there. (laughs) Crazy Uncle Larry. We can keep him down there. But he's eventually going to get out. Give us a bad day. He's going to come out. He's going to hear a bunch of noise going on and want to come talk and see what's up. Uncle Larry's just waiting for a day to come out. And that's where, not where I want to be. And I, don't, I can't condemn myself because I know that's the nature of man. He keeps trying to just chain up things and he wants to hold on to them. He doesn't want to let them go. He keeps trying to hide them from God as they did in the garden. When, when, they, when it was revealed, whenever they ate of that tree uh, of life, uh, I mean tree of knowledge of good and evil, they began to hide from God. Even though, like you know, you can't really hide. They began to hide themselves. And that's what we often do, these things within us. We just try to hide them, just try to act like they're not there. We forget about them. <laughs> as, as, as was talked about, all these ministries that say we've arrived and people are still dying. Yeah. They just try to act like it's not going on. Yeah. It's what I call delusional. The people I treat out the ranch, whenever they act like some, nothing's wrong with their life, that's what we call delusional. They're out of reality. And I believe when you come in contact with the Lord, you get a reality check. Yes. That's where that... Uh, uh, Um, the repentance comes from. It's not out of a guilty old order way, but there's a repentance where we say, oh Lord, where he begins to shine light on that. And we say, I didn't even know that was still there, but I want to change this. I want you to take this over. And that's what it takes a willing people. But he's changing us and it's coming through a sound of an alarm. There's an alarm being sounded forth in a land from Zion that's, that's, that's beginning to change the way things operate and work in us. Because I think this new order, that's what the, the Lord, the, uh, the word the Lord gave to me was it's an internal order that we're getting. We talk about a new order. It's an order coming from within. It it's an internal, eternal order that Jesus has always operated out of. That he placed within man long ago. That he's chose in his plan to reserve back into a time as this. What a calling. This isn't a message to get into to set you free of condemnation of hell. <laughs> This is a message to get into to walk through hell and to come out on the other side changed. Yes. Because if you're walking into this message and you're not going to go through hell, you're missing the point. Amen. You're not being changed. That's where the fire is. We've got to see the fire and walk to it. Say, that's what I want. I want the fire in my life. Because I know I'm not where I need to be. But when we're delusional and think everything's all right, we don't need the fire. We just sit in our little corners and we listen to all these trumpets that aren't God. They're not the, they're not the, God, uh, the, the trumpets that God's sounding forth. They're just trumpets being blown. They, have no, they, they are the chaotic trumpets. They're the ones that are sounding the alarm that's just confusion and chaos and confusing people and condemning people. Whether your message is condemning or not, if you have a message of delusion, it's going to condemn some, someone down the line because it's going to contradict the reality of their life. Because there's only one true message, one true gospel, one true reality. That's the only one that's going to people are really going to be able to uh, understand to the fullest. Yes. 
So hallelujah. I just uh, praise the Lord and just ask a blessing up over all the people that are struggling in this hour. Because the body needs it. And the body needs us. And we need the body. We need the body. Without the body, we're just a, a, a solo act. And God knows that's not going to change anything. Glory to God. I've been knowing this for quite some time, as far as that goes. And I know going through the fire, you come out as pure gold, even though we're not quite there yet, but I do feel that's what he's doing. But I have learned for quite some time now to our people, our ministers, the one God puts you around with, I mean, puts you like you, Charlotte, that I've known he has dealt with me, because I've asked him about certain things, what's going on. I don't go and ask the neighbor. I ask God, okay? I want to know what's going on. I get concerned. I worry, you know. I've always been called a worry ward. So I go to the Lord concerning this. And one thing he told me is to stand with my people. I mean, I've learned, and I said, what? He says, stand with my people. Don't judge. Don't say anything till I tell you to. Stand with them. And I learned to stand and be quiet. And I've learned so much through going to God saying, teach me. I need to know a lot of things, you know. And he did tell me a while back I was being tutored. I heard it. Now, I also heard I'm not being tutored anymore. So my goal is, is to let God keep working in me, yes. love him with all my heart and soul, and he'll do the rest. And when he tells you to move, move. I've been praying at night on my patio to people I don't even know. In my spirit, to people I do know. And so when he tells you, and you feel in your heart to pray for somebody, whether you see them in front of you or not, that spirit is going forth because God says so. And that to me is being obedient and obeying the Lord. And I've learned to love, I swear, I, he has knocked so much off of me, and I have learned to love everybody, and I hope I keep doing that all the time. Amen. So he's a great and wonderful God, and I, I, I admire everybody. I really do. Praise God. That was beautiful, Zach. And I'm not going to add too much to it at all. Uh, we are in that time, are we not? Well, we are expressing something that uh, is not of us. It's of Him. And uh, Saturday night, when I ministered during the conference, um, the Lord had me go into a place in Him that I, uh, I don't know if I've ever been in that exact place before. Um, but it opened up my eyes to uh, some things. And uh, it opened up my eyes to the fact that um, it's like a death entering into the spirit of Christ. The flesh fights it. The flesh doesn't have any place in it. Um, you know, our mind, our carnal mind, doesn't connect with God. Our, our spiritual mind does. And it desires that. But our carnal mind, it would rather be doing something else. It would rather be thinking on other things. Uh, and, uh, it, but when I entered into that place uh, Saturday night, um, it uh, felt great when I was there when the Spirit had control. But you know, uh, 
I suffered for three days in my body. And it opened up my eyes to the fact that there's a realm in God that doesn't get entered into easily. You don't enter into it, you know, like just strolling in. It's not that sort of thing that you just walk into it. It takes like a death to enter into it. It's that place where uh, it's holy. And it's so holy that your flesh doesn't know how to behave in it. It doesn't know what to do in it. Uh, it's just trying to survive it, like a roller coaster ride. You're just trying to get through it and hope that you come out all right. Uh, and, and that's the way that journey is into that place where our words are not our words anymore. They are the words of God. And in that place Saturday night, I felt more than I knew intellectually, I felt a lot. I saw things. Uh, as you remember, uh, if you were there, if you've listened or, uh, to the CDs or saw the DVDs, I started ministering. Uh, I remember telling Mike, and I saw his mother uh, by, standing by him right there. And uh, she was communicating uh, with me when I was in that place, it was very uh, profound. And she was wanting me to let Mike know that she was aware of what he was facing. And that she, and she had her hand on his shoulder. And she was wanting me to let him know that she was ministering to him, strengthening him. That he wasn't uh, going through that alone but that she was with him in that. And it just, uh, you know, and at that time, like I said, myself, I'm just trying to not interfere. I'm trying not to get in the way of God. And I'm going through all of these uh, physical things during that time, just trying to stay out of it and letting my mouth say the things that God wanted me to say. And then I remembered uh, Ron and Sharon Poach over here and their son that uh, had gone on to be with the Lord, I believe, five years ago, almost to the day, just before our meeting began, was the anniversary of his uh, passing over. And uh, I, I started ministering to him and to them both, letting them know that, that uh, he was going through a transition, and he wanted them to know <laughs> And what I remember him communicating is to them is, come on, come through it. As you go through your transition, I'm going through this transition here. It's all affecting each other, one from the other. And, uh, uh, and I started seeing that uh, in that way. And uh, I'll tell you what it was. It was and the more that I've thought on that uh, since last week, the more I have thought upon that, the more I see that God is getting ready to bring a response out of God's ministry for death, corruption, all of these things that are beyond the ministry of the fivefold office of the church realm, uh, where they just minister forgiveness of sins. Uh, a salvation, uh, have a joyful, peaceful life, how to prosper in the Lord, and all of these things, which all need to be ministered. But all of a sudden, it awakened me to the fact that we have been called for something else, for something beyond just the church ministry, beyond just preaching, teaching, and all of this. But we were being called to be a response from God in order to go to the root of creation's demise. And uh, the, the root of it all is a nature, a sin nature that God is laying the ax to. And there has to be a ministry that doesn't just heal bodies, thank God for it, 
doesn't just have a miracle ministry to pray for the sick. Thank God for it. But, that, but, but you know, uh, even if that happens, if you get healed of, say, cancer, guess what? Unless there is something changed in the very root of us, we're going to die of something else. Uh, but thank God for it, and God heals and God restores. But there is a ministry that God has reserved back into himself that is going to have the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. And they're going to be able to loosen the life that God has embedded within his people. Hallelujah. So that is the next step for us to come into that realization. I believe that. I believe that we are getting back to ground zero of our calling, of our ordination, of why we are who we are. Hallelujah. Why we can't just flow in other orders. Why, why God hasn't told us, well, just become another church like all the other churches. Why has God dealt with us the way he's dealt with us? Why has he shown us these things that he has shown to us? Well, for the reason is that he is going to respond through us that is going to restore creation back into the image, likeness, character, and nature of God their Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So in the days to come, I'm going to be ministering that. I'm going to be believing God to be able to minister some of that to the first fruits. You know, this is like a covert ministry. It's uh, underground. It's not on the high platforms of religiosity of the mega churches. This is an underground covert ministry that God is doing in us. It's not to be broadcast everywhere. It's not to be on a platform where everybody hears it. It is to be covert. It is to be instructed by God to those that have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. And it's only by the Spirit that we will know these things. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be ministering a lot about uh, a spiritual immune response. Like in our bodies, we have an immune, immune system. It's what keeps us alive. We fight germs, bacteria, viruses every minute of our life. Every minute of our life, we wage war against pathogens, against foreign molecules, against cancer, virus, bacteria, all of these things that affect our body, that uh, our body is, it has built into it an immune system that deals with it. And uh, I see us in the ministry, this people, that's ministering this word as an immune response. Now, uh, someone without a response in their body is a sickly person, weak and weary. But the response is what we have to get through. It's like I was saying when I entered into that realm. I paid a price for that. It was, uh, and I was telling Zach, uh, I'm going to be speaking about things that I, I, I'm not the most qualified person to be speaking on in the natural. But I am going to be comparing them to spiritual things. I loved what John Castleman ministered during our meeting. A lot of people probably had never heard someone maybe take everything in the Old Testament uh, scriptures that he was using and reveal them as things going on in us. Because that's what the Old Testament is for. It was written for us to be able to understand what's going on inside us, in the spiritual realm, inside our being. All of this that, uh, that uh, Zach read and that he ministered to us what the spiritual significance of it is. Uh, the nations that God was, had uh, commanded Israel to defeat and to drive out of the land. Those nations are nations in us. 
uh, principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, things that have had rule over us. And God is a jealous God. He wants to be the king of our being. Hallelujah. And, and, and you know, sometimes we have made friends with our enemies. We've compromised with them. We've said, well, I know I have anger, but I'll keep it under control as much as I possibly can. <laughs> and we're satisfied with that. But when we get in our car and somebody does something stupid in front of us, <laughs> that anger's there because it hasn't been dealt with. It's an enemy that we have made peace with. And we've allowed it to have a place in us. And see, this is why a lot of ministry have overlooked all of this. They don't, it's too negative to them. Oh, we don't want to deal with those things. Just so long as we're able to get through a day, okay. And uh, let, let's just minister about what has already been done and it's all finished and we don't have to do anything more. We're satisfied with just this that we have. And I'm not. I'm not satisfied with it. I believe there is a realm in God that I am being called to, that you're being called to, that it's going to take death. It's going to be a death process where we die out to our natural tendencies and our natural personalities and our natural inhibitions and we start letting our inner man have control. Hallelujah. We start letting the inner man minister through us. We start letting the mind of Christ minister through us. Hallelujah. So that we start expressing not ourselves, but we start expressing more of God. And it's not just ministering in the pulpit I'm talking about. I'm talking about our everyday life. Hallelujah. Because eventually, this will take us over. It will rule over us. And it will have its way in us. Praise God. Amen. But that's to come. Uh, I'm, I'm believing in that, uh, that. That God's going to, uh, that's going to be something I'll be ministering on. And we need to hear more and more from the body so that we start getting the expression of Christ so that out of many, amen, a ministry is done. Because some things have to be ministered on one level, other things have to be ministered on another level, and other things on a higher level. But it's all going to set us free. But there is an enemy, as Zach said, that has not been dealt with yet. It's been put under the foot of Jesus, but he will not, uh, his work will not be done until it is put under the foot of everybody. Hallelujah. Until whatever God did for Jesus, whatever God did for Jesus, he has done it for every man, woman, and child. <laughs> that's, a, that's a high and lofty goal, is it not? And your natural mind is going to say, Pooh, how could I ever be a part of that? How could I ever find a way to minister to something that great? No, let's just stay here and have five fishes and uh, a few loaves of bread and we'll multiply it. We'll do all those kind of things. It's going to take us places that we never thought we could go. But somebody has got to go there. Somebody has got to start making the transition from earthly to that which is heavenly without dying and, 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 and laying their body down in a grave. Transition into that place. And I have so much to say on it and I don't have the words for it. But to allow that inner house to come upon us and to swallow up this outer house. And there's all kinds of things that the scripture uses. But the next time I minister, I'm going to minister about the inoculation of Jesus Christ. He is our immunity. Jesus has the answer that defeats death in us. And I'm going to bring out some scriptures about Moses, 
about the fiery serpents that God loosed upon the children of Israel because of their disobedience and rebellion and what God used to cure them of that. And I'm going to minister on the fiery serpent. And, and the scripture goes through it in the Old Testament with Moses and then Jesus ministered on it that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And, uh, and that is an inoculation, a vaccine against death. Praise God. And, and, and we're going to activate that. We're going to come into the reality of that. We're going to come into the life of it. Because that's something we must do, is have the life of what we're talking about. Amen? Oh, I can't wait. Hallelujah. Amen. So thanks, everybody, for ministering this morning, for being a part of the service. And Lord, we pray that you will be with each one of us, Lord. All of those that have tuned into this, God, to this service. Lord, let their uh, spirit be quickened. Excite their spirit, Lord. Let them see the reality of this. And God, let them get ready and be prepared each day for you to express yourself in new and living ways, God. Go before us, Lord. Oh, Father, and prepare the way, God, that we may enter in to these very things, that we might experience these things that we're talking about now. But, God, we look for the day when we will experience the life of it. Hallelujah. Where it will be seen and demonstrated and manifested in our body. Hallelujah. In our soul and in our mind. Hallelujah. That, God, our whole man will come into the experience the baptism of this life. Hallelujah. Oh God, so keep us, Lord. Heal us and restore us. Make us alive, oh God. We minister your word to all those who are suffering today. God, give them strength and be their deliverer, oh Lord. Sound the alarm in all of your holy mountain, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Awaken your people unto the day of the Lord that is in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Amen. God bless. Praise God. Hallelujah.